if you've been watching the news, reading social media, Reddit, Twitter, whatever, chances are you think that the Toronto real estate market is absolutely in free fall and we're all doomed. I'm an active agent in the city. I talked to a lot of top producing agents in the GTA. Here's what I'm going to share in terms of what we're seeing on the ground floor right here, right now in this current market and what I think is going to happen over the next few months. Hi, my name is Vass and I'm a chartered professional accountant turned realtor that's built and invested in real estate right here in York Region, Toronto and in secondary markets outside of the GTA. Now let's get into it. All right, so let's talk about what is happening. First of all, there's been a huge market sentiment shift that happened with buyers over the last month and a half. There are two main factors that I personally see that are the reason for this market change. First, it's the war in Ukraine. Whatever happened at the tail end of, end of February, beginning of March, it really spooked everybody here. Number one, gas prices went through the roof overnight and so did food prices. I'm pretty sure everybody's feeling the difference in their grocery bills and their spending. I know I'm feeling it and I'm not one to track pennies, but I'm definitely seeing a huge increase in our monthly spending when we have not actually changed our spending habits. Number two is the risk of interest rate hikes. And that is because inflation is running rampant right now. Obviously, the Bank of Canada has to raise rates. They were delayed in doing this for the last eight to 12 months when they should have really started doing this. But here we are now. In April, we had the biggest rate hike in history in the last 20 years, at least, where the Bank of Canada raised rates by 50 basis points. And now the fear is there's another 50 basis point hike coming in the following month. So what does this all mean for all of us as buyers or sellers or those in the space? Well, I'll share a few of my thoughts in terms of what I think is going to happen and what is actually happening right now on the ground floor. All right, let's take a look at some of the stats, mid-market stats for April. Uh, this is a must-follow account, in my opinion, Ivan Gorbaday on Twitter. This guy puts out something that's very easy uh, to read, comprehend. He touches on all bases. Very data-driven, so again, highly recommend it. Now, let's talk about prices. As you can see right here, in February we had our peak, and then in March we had our drop, and this is where we're trending right now for April. This is for Greater Toronto Area, all home types. When you drill down, looking at York Region in particular, we're seeing a pretty massive drop similar to 2017. We've seen a lot of price gain in York Region right now, so not overly surprising why this is happening. It could also be happening to all of these outer suburbs where they're affected or impacted by the unwind of COVID and people having to go back to the office. Maybe buying a house that's not within a commutable distance of your employer is probably not the best idea. But anyway, we'll see how this story unfolds. It's too early to tell. Looking at Peel, holding up a little bit better, but I think prices here did not increase as much. Or maybe they did, but the drop were in aggregate dollars. We're talking lower dollars. 1.3 versus you know close to 1.6 and then durham i think durham in general was the darling of COVID in terms of price gains between whitby ajax pickering even oshawa we saw some of the great biggest price hikes overall in the gta if i was a guessing man this is where i'd see the biggest unwind in price appreciation but this is telling us something a little bit different i think prices are holding a little bit better at least they're stabilizing from the speak that we had in March. Now moving on to one favorite asset class for me is condos. So as of right now, condos appear unaffected. As you can see, condos were lagging for the most part relative to detached. Everybody wanted more space. Nobody wanted to live in a condo, especially during lockdown. So right now, space downtown being close to employers, it seems to be mattering a lot more. And now we're seeing condos actually shoot up in price and actually stay there. So these are condo apartments in Toronto. And then this is how it compares to Toronto Detached, which is very interesting as well. Location, again, seems to matter where it did not matter in 2021, or at least being centrally located didn't matter. Now, let's talk about the elephant in the room, Canadian inflation rate. So 6.7%, I'm pretty sure nobody believes this is correct. This number is double digits for sure. It's just the way the CPI is being calculated right now does not reflect a lot of the consumer goods and things that we actually spend money on that's actually reflected in here. I believe I don't believe used cars are in it, which makes no sense. But anyway, the elephant in the room is inflation. So what do we do with inflation? Well, the only tool left in Bank of Canada's tool chest is raising rates. 
Now, we've already had one big rate hike, and we're most likely going to have another one. Now, looking at the Canada five-year government bond, let's just wait for this to refresh. If we take a look, the hikes began right here, mid-March. Since mid-March, we are already up 1%, and we're likely to go up another 50 basis points, if not more. So potentially, we have about 2% to go, unless we enter into a technical recession, and the government decides to back off of raising interest rates. We don't know right now. The biggest question mark here is really not the Bank of Canada, which is becoming less and less relevant. It is what is going to happen to the United States. When the United States starts tackling their inflation, that is what we're most likely going to follow, and that is going to have a much bigger impact on us here than the Bank of Canada. All right, so let's recap. So far, war in Ukraine, lots of uncertainty, one big rate hike, possibly another one coming. So what does this all mean and where do we see the market going? So what I can tell you is there's a very basic rule that's been true for the most part for decades. For every 1% interest rate hike increase that we get, prices drop by 10%. And this is a very simple arithmetic just based on purchasing power. Everybody shops on payment. So all you need to know is that once interest rates go up by 1%, Purchasing power drops by 10% when it comes to mortgages and 25 to 30 year amortizations. Now, we've already had a 1% hike. We're likely in total going to see two before we see a technical recession or before the Bank of Canada decides to let go of the gas. So what does that mean in the grand scheme of things? Well, I see it as we're probably on the hook for at least a 20% pullback of the peaks in February. That would put us right around summer of 2021 pricing. Now, the one caveat to this is that if inflation continues to run rampant, generally inflation is correlated with housing. So if inflation goes up, housing prices also go up. Now, that is not a rule, but generally, statistically speaking, that is what happens. And that is what we potentially could see. Now, from the ground floor perspective, what I can tell you speaking to other top producing agents is Last week, there were almost no showings. There was no action happening on the ground floor. If you had an open house, nobody's showing up. If you had an offer night, chances are you're not getting any offers. However, in the last few days, we're noticing an uptick in showings and we're noticing an uptick in offers. Nothing crazy, but you have two groups of people, motivated buyers with old pre-approvals that need to close on a house before a certain date in order to lock in old mortgage rates. And then on the other hand, you have motivated sellers who have houses on the market right now that they need to sell because they've already bought another property. Once these two groups are out of the market in due time, probably May, summer, we're gonna, pro we're gonna see the fallout of where everything lands and potentially we're gonna see what the market's gonna look like for the rest of the year. But right now there's a lot of price discrepancy throughout. There are some opportunities, but it's obviously very risky because we don't know uh, where we are in catching this falling knife. Now, I don't think we're going to see a crash, but we're definitely due for some correction and 20% doesn't seem that unreasonable to me. Now, this is all high level and honestly, it's, um, it's, it's, not, it's very difficult to paint this argument for the entire GTA because, for example, you can look at a place like East York that's absolutely bonkers and it's still on fire right now. You can look at certain condos downtown, same thing. If you're a buyer and you have questions about specific areas or your specific situation, please feel free to text or call me. I'd love to chat. I can help you out. And at least I can give you my perspective on what I'm seeing in your particular areas. Thank you for watching. And I hope you found this very useful.